Hello everyone out there at Award Travel 101 and welcome to our live event. Uh, many of you have seen us post over the past few weeks information about uh, a new savings account from Basque Bank where you can earn American Airlines miles. And I wanted to take this time and we have this great opportunity tonight to have uh, the, the top guy, the president of Basque Bank, Matt Quayle with us to do a short interview and then we'll open it up for some questions and answers and welcome all of you to ask anything that you have about these accounts about Basque Bank and uh, get all the information that you need. So I will welcome him now and Matt, welcome to uh, Award Travel 101, your first live broadcast with us. No, thanks so much. I'm very excited to be here and very excited to talk about Basque Bank. So we're going to get started out, since this is a travel group, uh, we're going to talk a little bit about your travels and your family's travels yeah. first, and then we'll get into the banking stuff that uh, people are here to uh, listen to and learn about. But of course, everyone always likes to hear about travel and see, see why you're involved in this and why yeah. you want to get into something that will help people earn miles. So in our, our previous conversations, we, we've talked a little bit about your family and just go over that for our group members. You have three kids, correct? That's correct. Um, but, you know, I think you, know, you talk about award travel. My father was a big traveler and actually a million miler with American. So, you know, even as a kid, um, I was able to go on some of these award trips. And, you know, my mother is actually a customer of our bank as well. And her AA number goes back almost 40 years. So yeah, this so is one been, of those pieces. You've yeah, been where, American uh, Air for, for a long, long time. So. Yeah. So, um, I, you know, I grew up in Phoenix and um, always flew American quite a bit. So, you know, I've loved uh, flying with them, taking award trips. And, you know, you said I have three kids. So whenever I travel, um, I'm bringing, you know, a, a huge number of people. I got five people. So being able to use miles has been fantastic. And do you travel a lot for work that you get to earn a lot of miles that way? Yeah, I'm actually, I'm a platinum um, customer with American, so I do do a fair amount of travel just on the job, um, but also just a lot of, you know, kind of leisure travel. Um, last September, my wife and I went to Paris uh, for a weekend for a wedding. You know, I took the, the kids and the family to Hawaii, and in uh, both instances, I was able to use points uh, for Hawaii. Actually, you know, I was able to upgrade um, everybody to first class on the way back because that was that overnight flight, and I wanted people to sleep. And then Paris, I was able to use miles, you know, just to get there. It's a world of difference on those red-eye flights if you have a place where you can lay down. Uh, oh, yeah. And I found that it, even sometimes if there's an open row in economy and I can lay down, then it's a world of difference. It's, but. it's huge. And, um, you know, it's one of those things you can, it's, it's so hard to accumulate enough points. Um, so I've always gotten them through flying. I've always gotten them through cards. And I've, I've tried doing some other promotions. Uh, so the idea here of actually being able to save and earn more miles was just something that was very attractive. So you talked a little bit about your award trips that you took as a kid and now with yeah. your family. What's is, is there one trip that stands out in your mind as the best trip that you've taken? Um, and how did you use miles or points on that trip? Well, I think the, um, you know, some of the best trips I've taken um, have definitely been, you know, when I've been able to go international. Um, I said that the trip with my wife to Paris was very special. She'd never been there before. Uh, we were going to see a classmate of hers go and get married. And, you know, I'd been saving miles for a couple of years. So I knew I'd always wanted to go to Paris, um, just wanted to find that right opportunity. So being able to use miles to do that was, was fantastic. Yeah, absolutely. And you can see on this little backdrop I have behind me, we've got the Eiffel Tower there. But Paris is pretty special for our family, too. I actually flew my wife over there to propose to her and she had studied oh, wow. Paris. And so we've been back a few times. We've taken the kids and my parents and that's how the reason I originally got into loyalty programs and earning miles and points is because we wanted to take a trip to Paris and it was prohibitively expensive for us at the time. It, so it, Exactly. And that that's one of the things I really like about miles, at least for me, and I know everybody uses miles in different ways, is I like using them really a couple of different ways. One, I like to think about bucket list trips. So right now I'm saving some of my miles to go to Japan. Um, you know, I want to kind of get enough miles to be able to go do that. But secondarily, you know, I like using them for upgrades. Um, so I'm going with the family to Costa Rica over spring break and one leg of that flight. So, you know, I, I bought the coach tickets and I've used miles that way. 
But the third way, and I know this is something that um, a lot of people do as well, is a lot of times I like to use miles, you know, kind of relative to cash. Um, you know, my wife had to take a trip um, back home, you know, suddenly. We had to get a ticket the next day, and the flight prices were exorbitant. So what I was taking a look at, I was like, I'd rather use miles. Um, I didn't want to blow my budget for the month because that ticket would have been so expensive. And I loved having the optionality of having miles instead. Yeah, they work great, especially if you need to get back, if there's a, a family emergency or, or something happens to a family member and tickets, air, airlines don't see your urgency a lot of times. So using miles can really help save a lot of money in that case. Uh, that Costa Rica trip, I, I'm excited to hear how that goes. We've been a couple of times, my wife and I went to Costa Rica yeah. and loved it so much that we took the kids back a couple of years later because we decided that they absolutely needed to see that. And so we've been to Costa Rica twice now, and we have never been to any of the beaches, which is why a lot of people <laughs> go to Costa Rica. <laughs> so we've done uh, a lot of the interior stuff. We've done um, the the cloud forest. We've done the, the zip, zip lining and canyoneering. And we've done uh, Tortuguero, which is on the, the far east side. And it's a, an experience just getting there, but it's very rustic and very uh, in nature and in the jungle. And we just love that. So... I, I'd love to hear what, what you guys do and what you get up to. And I'm guessing it'll probably be some beach time like everyone else I've ever talked to that goes to Costa <laughs> well, Rica. My kids are super active. Um, so the idea of having them kind of power through some museums is just not the right thing. So to your point, we're doing some zip lining. We're also, we want to do some surfing. Um, yeah. You know, I live in Texas now um, in Austin, so I'm not close to the water. But, you know, whenever I can get out to the beach and, and do a little surfing, that's always an awesome thing. So I've gotten the kids out a couple of times and it's so fantastic because the kids just pick it up so quickly. Yeah, my my younger son, the 13 year old, is a gymnast and we tried surfing for the first time in Australia last year and he absolutely loved it and decided he wants to go to college there so he can surf all the time. And But he has, <laughs> he has the balance and the ability to pop up on the board is nothing for him. Whereas, yeah, I just, yeah, I got to keep working on my upper body strength. Yeah, it was a little tougher for me. <laughs> yeah, my kids are way better shape than I am. So let's uh, transition now that we've talked a little bit about travel and, and the good yeah. stuff. Let's get over to the the way that we're going to help people earn some miles so they can take these trips and, and get into a little bit of your background. Sure. Um, how, how did you get into the banking industry or how long have you been in the banking industry? Well, you know, I've been in um, really financial services uh, for the last decade or so. I was at American Express, um, so obviously well aware, well of the uh, rewards game there. And then I was with the MetLife, um, which is life insurance and annuities, and part of the transition to Bright House Financial. And through all those different jobs, the thing that really struck me on the financial services side was how hard it was for people to talk about money and how hard it was for people to save. Um, you know, you talk to a lot of people everybody just feels like they haven't done enough. Um, they feel like they should have saved more. And there's this constant tension they feel between saving for tomorrow and living for today. So Texas Capital reached out to me saying, hey, we really want to um, launch this new business. We want to do something for consumers. Um, and the idea of actually doing a savings account to help people save but rewarding them at the same time was, was very, very compelling. So they had the idea for the new, uh, for those those people who are watching who don't know, Bass Bank is a, a completely new arm of yeah. Texas Capital Bank. Yeah. They, so they had the idea for this and reached out to you to kind of get you to formulate it and launch it and fine tune it? Yeah, well, they had um, a, a business called Bank Direct, which you've probably heard of, which actually has a 20-year relationship with American Airlines. And I think well, that was a business that we always saw had huge potential, but we really needed to upgrade the technology and make a couple of changes. In particular, the thing that we kept on hearing was we needed no fees. And so the idea was how do we take this great concept we have and actually bring that value prop to life in a way that's more relevant for today's customers. So what we did was we um, you know, spun up this new bank, um, this new savings account on modern technology, but most importantly with no fees. Because what we kept on hearing from people again and again is, is help me save, but don't charge me to do that. Yeah, and that's what a lot of people who work uh, with loyalty programs and earn miles and points with hotels and airlines, anytime we see fees for things, we think, well, that kills the value of what I'm earning. 
Um, yeah. So the the no fees, I think, is a huge thing and the ability to save that money and put that money aside and earn miles instead of the, the paltry little bit of interest you get with savings account at most banks today. Um, yeah. I think it's a, a, a great feature that, that people are really excited about. Well, the thing I'm interested in too, and you, you know, I've talked about the fact that there's a lot of different ways to earn miles between flying, between um, credit cards, from different promotions. But what I've always found with miles for myself personally is the more miles I have, the more valuable they are to me because it allows me to do those first class upgrades, allows me to take those international flights, um, and allows me to fly with you know more people. So what I really liked about this concept is it actually builds on top of your other mileage earning vehicles. In a lot of ways, it makes every all the other miles you're earning even more valuable. So I definitely think you're going to have people who are going to put money aside, not only to save, but also just to use this tactically, which is I'm close to an award ticket or I want to go to Japan. So I'm going to put some money aside to earn those miles without having to spend the cash. And that's interesting the way you put that. I actually kind of love the way you said that, that you, the more miles you have, the more they're worth. Because we've yeah. had some comments as we've done some of these posts, people say, well, if I... If I'm only earning this little bit, I'd rather earn cash. I'm only earning this number of miles and I can earn yeah. a, a semi-equivalent amount of cash. And that it, it could be very true that the cash that they would get an in interest in another account might be a better bet if they're booking um, low level, fairly cheap economy tickets from uh, Orlando to Houston. Right. But once you are able to earn enough miles so that you're booking a, a partner ticket and flying uh, Cathay Pacific business class or first class, then those miles become hugely valuable. And you would much, much rather have those than uh, 10 or, or $20 or whatever your interest would be from, from a traditional bank. Yeah. And, and the other way I think about it too, is it's, there is that arbitrage opportunity. So, you know, I was talking about my wife's plane ticket, that, that was a domestic flight, but I had a better deal on the miles than a cash. Um, you know, this um, Christmas, I ended up staying in a hotel. And you know what? It was cheaper for me to spend cash than miles. But the fact that I have the balance in both, let me make those choices. So what it allows you to do is always maximize your return. And for me, like, I get a salary. So I'm getting cash on a regular basis. What I don't have is the same way to earn miles on a regular basis. So that's why I put a lot of savings into Basque because it lets me almost kind of I would say double up or triple up on what I'm earning from flying, what I'm earning from credit cards, and then what I'm earning here. And that's great. You're a, a good way to put it again with the ticket for your wife. If that ticket was whatever, ten thousand twelve hundred dollars, twelve thousand <laughs> miles, and you yeah. only had eight thousand, then those last couple thousand that you maybe got from your savings account at Basque Bank are hugely valuable because otherwise you would have had to pay cash for it. Exactly. So people need so to, I, to think of those things when they're thinking about the value of these miles. It's not, some people look, um, some sites like to put values on miles, like an American mile may be worth 1.4 yeah. cents or 1.8 cents. Or I've never really bought into that because it, it all depends on how you use it. And my, my view has always kind of been, uh, I'm happy to earn the miles and the value I put on the miles is if I can get more value when redeeming it than it costs me to earn it, then I'm happy with that. And I don't care what yeah. that value is. If I earned it for free and I redeem it for eight tenths of a cent per point, great, I did well. If I earned it at one or two cents per point, which is kind of if you're comparing to a traditional interest account or a, a high earning interest account, then I redeem it for four or five cents a point. Great. If I redeem it I, for 10 or 11 or 12 cents a point, even better. But it really just depends on how you redeem it. And it, as long as you can maximize those rewards, which is kind of what we try to teach people, it's, it's the whole purpose of Award Travel 101, then this seems like a great product for people to top off those accounts, to add in those extra miles, and yeah. to to earn, uh, I'm not going to say free, but earn significantly discounted plane tickets just for having their money sitting there versus sitting in some other bank. Yeah, and I think it kind of goes back to our purpose. We talk about making savings more rewarding. And really what we want to do is help people save for a purpose. And you know, when we took a step back and looked at all the reasons people saved, 
you know, travel is one of those big things that people save for. So if you're saving for travel and you know you're going to travel, you know, those, um, you know, miles get to be very valuable because exactly to your point, you can use them how you want to use them, when you want to use them, um, but you have the optionality to use them. And I think this is the thing that's interesting, reflecting back on your comment about, you know, what's the value of a mile? It's really hard trying to figure out what the value of a mile is, but it's not linear in the same way cash is linear. So that mile really depends on how you use it. And I think that's part of what's so great about what you guys do, um, you know, in terms of educating, because really the more educated you are, the more you can kind of get the maximum out of that mile. And really what we found is the people who are signing up for them, we call them life maximizers. Um, these are the kinds of people who are really trying to maximize every single thing they're doing and really always trying to figure out how they can get the most, you know, out of these award programs. Yeah, and that's uh, again a, a great way that Bass can fit into that and and earn people those extra miles that they need. I want to take a couple of minutes. We I had a, a list of questions for you here, but we sure. touched on several of them uh, going through the the differences with yeah. um, Basque versus Bank Direct and why you chose to work with American. And you you kind of we worked through some of those answers yeah. already. So I I want to get into. Um, a little bit, uh, some of the questions that people have asked, and we kind of hit on one, but I want to make it yeah. fairly clear. Some, we've had some questions um, and a lot of questions on the blog posts with people saying, well, I've never heard of Basque Bank. Why, right. why would I give money to this bank I've never heard of? I don't know who they are. I don't know if they're just going to take my money and disappear. Uh, right. And I think what people didn't realize that Although Bass Bank is new, Bass Bank is part of a huge bank that has been around approximately forever. Well, um, I wouldn't say approximately forever. No, um, but Texas for, Capital for, for is for a long one time. of the biggest banks in Texas, and, and obviously one of the biggest banks in the, in the country as well. And you know, we've had this twenty-year partnership with American Airlines, so this isn't something that's new to us. Um, something we've been doing for a long time. And I think to your point. People should always do diligence, um, and they should always make sure that you know that account is FDIC insured, which it is with us. Yeah, and that was another question that people had, yeah. and I I think we've tried to get those points across, and just clarifying again now that um, yes, it, this is a bank. This is people said, yeah. yeah, I've heard of Bank Direct, but I haven't heard of Basque. Well, right, you're, <laughs> it's the same overall umbrella, the same bank with Texas Capital that it, that is running both of those branches. So. It's not uh, a bank you need to be scared of. It's not a bank that's going to disappear. It's not a bank that is going to not insure your money. It's a, a financial institution. It's a new name and a new division, but it's absolutely yeah. safe to put your money there. And you know, and, and Texas Capital is you know a commercial bank, right? They're a big bank that does a lot of business uh, banking, uh, really all over the country. And when you think about these consumer offerings, you know, we wanted to do offerings that were really transparent. So when we talk about Basque, really what we want to do is we wanted to evoke that travel piece. Um, you know, this is going to be um, an account for travelers, and we want to continue to add value for those people who are looking to travel. Bank Direct, on the other hand, um, is an online bank, but it's a full-service bank. It has checking, it has CDs, it has money markets, um, but it also has fees, you know, much like a lot of, um, you know, kind of traditional banks that offer checking. Okay, and then I, a couple other questions we'll run through. We had someone ask if there would be a hard pull on their credit. People in our groups are very concerned with that. Yeah, for, absolutely. With with applying for credit cards and yes. banks not wanting to see too many pulls. So if they right. open a, a savings account with Basque, are, will they see a, a hard pull on their credit report? There, there's not a hard pull on the credit. It's a savings account. So okay. we're not extending credit. Um, we don't have any lending products. Um, it's a savings account. So I think what's what's nice about it is exactly to your point, you really don't want to extend yourself and have too many credit cards out there. Perfect. And then we also had some some people had issues when they started to sign up for the accounts where it, they put in their email address and it said their identity couldn't be verified. Can you talk a little yeah. bit about that and why why they might get that issue and how to get around that? Well, you know, our customers' security is our, is our single most important thing. So we're very diligent on making sure that we verify people's identities. And we try doing that online. But if we can't do it online, 
um, we do have an offline process. You can actually call our call center and you'll see that right at the bottom of, you know, BassBank.com and they can help you with an offline process. You have to provide a little bit more paper. Um, you got to provide your driver's license and a utility bill, but that's another way we can verify your identity. Okay, so even if they can't get through with that one email address, I know we've had a couple of people that for some reason or another, their email address wasn't working and they tried uh, maybe a work email and that verified them fine and went through. Um, if that doesn't work, they can go ahead and call customer service. They, they should be able to get an account if they're a legitimate person. Exactly. And it's, it's, it's important that you know, we protect legitimate people. Yeah, and that's something I I wanted to touch on, um, and we talked about a little bit before the question came in before the uh, before we started this. But someone asked if you earn a whole bunch of miles with Bass Bank, is American Airlines going to shut you down? And <laughs> the, the reason for that question is due to some of the issues that people have been having um, that have signed up for too many credit cards, that have signed up for uh, credit cards and gotten mailers under their pets' names or their the kids names that don't exist or various things like that. Right. Um, and, and you said uh, it's easy. That's not going to be an issue because they can't get more than one account. Right. You cannot send up your pet. That is going to be a firm, firm rule for Bass Bank. Oh uh, yeah. You're only going to have one account. Um, but there is unlimited earn. So, you know, we have seen people put in uh, fairly large deposits because there's no cap on what you can earn in terms of the miles. And, so. um, but that, I mean, that should never be a problem with American because right. I don't want to say never because you never know what a, a company will do. But there, there is no way that people should have six different accounts and there's no way that right. people should be opening fake accounts. And that, that really is what American is going after at this point. Right. Um, so I don't know if that question was a kind of a, a bitter, I got shut down by American question <laughs> or if that was a, a legitimate question that people are worried about. Um, but either way, it shouldn't be a problem with Bass Bank. Um, I think that's about it as far as the, the questions we had that came in. I'm going to take a, a quick look on the uh, video here and see if we have any other questions. But while I'm doing that, I just want to say thank you to Matt for taking time out of your schedule. I know we had uh, it, it took a little bit to get this scheduled and uh, we didn't have maybe as much notice as we would have liked because we had to work on when we could do it. Um, your schedule is tight. I was traveling a couple <laughs> of times and we, we went back and forth through about four different things, but thank you so much for taking the time out of your evening and away from your family and away from your kids to come here. Um, I'm just uh, taking a quick look here and see if we have any last minute questions. You know, there's definitely one thing I'd want everybody to know in the audience. You know, so we obviously want people to get there faster uh, we do have a, a promotion right now in terms of sign up where you can earn 5,000 miles with a thousand dollar deposit that's held in the account for 30 days. Um, and that promotion is ending, um, end of February, February 29th. So for all those folks out there, there's still a great opportunity to sign up, um, and get those incremental bonus miles on top of what your regular earn would be. And then obviously we have a lot of people taking advantage of our, what we're calling our balance bonus program. So if you have, $50,000 in savings in the Bass account, over the course of the year, you'd earn 50,000 miles just from our regular one for one, but you'd also earn 20,000 bonus miles, 5,000 miles for the sign up, and then 1,000 miles for feedback. So over the course of the year, your $50,000 deposit could be 76,000 miles, and your $50,000 are still yours. You can pull it out, you can take it out whenever you want. Yeah, and that's uh, it's a good reminder to people because we have been uh, telling people about these accounts for a couple of yeah. weeks now, but that, that initial bonus is coming to an end at the yeah. end of February. So on the 29th will be the last day you can do that. And we'll get some reminders out to the group before then. Um, we did have one more question come in from the comments uh, and they asked, is uh, this account, are you restricted to six withdrawals or transfers per month the way you are with traditional savings accounts? Yes, so it's called um, Regulation D that for savings accounts, you are restricted to six. So it's not a transaction account. It's not a checking account. Um, it is an account for savings. Okay, so where you can leave your money there for a little while. You're not paying bills out of it. You're not uh, right. sending money to various things out of it. Uh, the same way that you would have a traditional savings account, just no fees that go along with it. Yeah, I mean, I think a lot of people who are putting money in, um, for a lot of folks, it's the rainy day fund. 
Um, it's the cash balance when they think about their investment portfolio, but it's, it's not money that they're looking to move, you know, all over the place. But I think for a lot of people, they also like the idea of having an account open. You know, you and I talked about the fact that you can use it tactically, but it's also just a great way to keep your American miles from expiring. Because as long as you have that fast account open with some money in there, you're going to earn miles every month, which will you know, extend um, your American miles lifetime before they expire. Yeah, so even if you forget about your account and you don't buy American for a year and a half, you don't really have to think about it because that even if you only have a little bit of money in there, that little those few miles are going to be kicking out every month and going. Right. Um, which actually goes to another question that got asked is, uh, how quickly do the miles transfer over to American Air? So, you know, essentially you earn daily and they, they transfer monthly. So what that means is if you put money in January 15th, you're going to earn uh, from January 15th through January 31st, and they're typically going to hit your American account by the 5th of the next month. So by February 5th, you'd see that mileage earn in there. Okay, so it comes in pretty quick if, if, yeah. as we get to the end of the month. Yes. All right. And I think that that's about all the questions we have for right now. We'll probably get some more in the comments as more people watch this uh, that weren't able to be with us here live. Uh, Matt, is there anything else you want to say uh, to encourage people to come and, and get an account with Bass Bank or anything you'd like to add? Uh, no, well, thanks so much. Really appreciate you know kind of being on. And I look forward to having you know more of your um, kind of award travel uh, followers join because I think we can help a lot of people get great trips. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, we look forward to having, I, I know some of the people we've been working with, with your uh, PR team and uh, various people we've seen joining the, the group here at Award Travel 101. So we look forward to helping you guys travel as well. Thank okay, you thank so you. much. Thank you so much for being here. All right, see you. Bye.